A low rent bad dream. Fanciful tripe. I puked. Hello friends, today I want to talk about a book that I just finished reading and I thoroughly enjoyed, but a lot of the world didn't. <laughs> I just finished reading The Pisces by Melissa Broder. This book's awesome. It's awesome in so many ways. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk a little bit about why I like the book so much and then I'm gonna read out some reviews from one star people who don't share my thoughts on the book and I'm gonna pull them apart a little bit and I'm gonna argue against them even though they don't care and I'm gonna see why they feel the way that they do or at least try to if I can. So this is me arguing <laughs> against one star Amazon reviews. What am I doing with my life? All right, let's have at it. The Pisces is awesome. The Pisces was longlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction 2019, I think. I peeled the sticker off my book, so now I don't know. The Pisces tells the story of a woman who is 38 years old. Her name's Lucy. She's an academic. She's been doing her PhD for a little bit too long on the Greek singer slash poet Sappho. Now she's in this awful state in her life where she and her partner, their relationship isn't going anywhere and they she instigates a break between them, which he really jumps on and goes, brilliant, let's break up. So now I can go sleep with my scientist friend and enter a whole new relationship. And then she suddenly feels at a loss, even though she instigated this. This was kind of her decision-ish. And so her sister, who is a very, very rich woman who lives on Venice Beach in LA, she and her partner are very, very wealthy because she designed yoga mats in the 90s or something, and now she's married to this Silicon Valley type. And so the two of them have a lot of money. And they say to Lucy, hey, come and house sit for us for the entire summer, about three months, we'll pay you, you look after our dog, and this dog is like their lifeblood. They're going off on a trip around Europe or something, not important. So Lucy's now in Venice, LA, lovely place, and she's chilling and looking after this dog, and she's on Tinder and she's trying to find men to sleep with, get into relationships with, bond with, whatever. And very, very early in the book, she meets this swimmer. This guy who every night kind of swims up onto the beach. The two of them have a little chat. His name's Theo. The two of them talk. And then slowly they enter into a relationship. This is a really creeping and slow aspect of the book. The first third of the book is just her entering into really bad toxic relationships with men who are written so brilliantly. Like these are stereotypes of certain types of creepy men. So Lucy's not good at relationships. She's not good with men. And Lucy, very, very importantly, is a very depressed, very confused, selfish, inconsiderate, and unlikable person. I lay this out for two reasons. One, it was a lot of reviewers' biggest problem with the book, and I will come to that later. And two, because Lucy is broken and difficult to relate to, and that's very much the point. She's depressed, she's confused, she's suicidal at times, and unfortunately, and this is speaking from personal experience, knowing people with depression and suffering with depression myself, having mental health issues can make you a very unlikable person for many, many reasons. You can be difficult to sympathize with, you get into fights and arguments with people, you lose friends. Mental health is a difficult thing for the people who suffer with it and the people who suffer with the person suffering with it. It's a difficult thing. And so Lucy has these really difficult mental health issues and she is making terrible, terrible decisions. She's also been asked to join this group, this group therapy for women who are addicted to love and sex, and she befriends them, and they are not helpful people, they are also self-destructive people, and they are kind of your supporting cast, or at least a handful of them are. One of them is this British woman who has a very, very British sense of humour, sarcasm, bleak, and she's quite a fun character just to read. Now, at the halfway point of the book, there is a twist, and that twist is revealed pretty much by the cover art of the book, so don't worry about it if you don't know. There's no way that you can read this book and not know the twist, I think. And the twist is that Theo, the swimmer that she's slowly been talking to and kind of falling in love with, who seems like a really, really healthy relationship option, turns out he's a merman. Like an actual, honest-to-God merman. For the second half of the book, the two of them enter a very intense sexual relationship. And she starts doing things that are very unhealthy, very selfish, very cruel, just to try to get more of this thing that she's addicted to. The thing she's addicted to is his company, his sex, the way that he treats her. 
she is addicted to him and everything that he encompasses. And that seems to be a lot of people's problem with the book is what she does because she's so addicted to Theo and his love and his sex, etc. The book is also really, really crass. And I'm using other people's words here. It's a book full of sex and explicit content. It is full of really, really dark jokes and dark humour and explicit content. That's the only way I can describe it without saying things that'll get me demonetized. I can't quote the book, but it uses sex and very, very explicit body-related things for the sake of humour and also to be sexy. This is a sexy book and a lot of reviewers all over the back have remarked just how sexy this book is. There is a lot of sex in it and it's raunchy, it's racy, it's intense. And it is, at times, quite erotic. Other times, it's tragic. And other times, again, it's hilarious. The sex is very multifaceted in this book. You will laugh at moments, you will cry at other moments, and you will be aroused. It's a really broad approach to sex, and that's fantastic. It's, it's a very dynamic approach to having sex, seeking out sex, relationships, how we talk about sex. And it's very important that this book was written by a woman. Melissa Broder has opened up a dialogue when it comes to how we as a society expect women to talk about sex. This is in ways a very feminist book because it's written with a lot of very, very explicit language and jokes that traditionally women would not be expected to make. You know, people of my parents' generation would be shocked, shocked are the kinds of things that Melissa Broder writes here, especially as a woman. And that's part of the fun, that's why it's such an important book, is that Melissa Broder is writing the kinds of crass and dark and gory and taboo base things that men can get away with writing, but women really shouldn't. Women should hold themselves to a higher standard. Women should be more respectable and women should be more approachable and beautiful in their language. They should be prudish, I guess. And this book says no. Melissa Broder says no, I'm not going to be prudish with the Pisces. I'm going to use it as a vehicle to express myself in a way that women typically, historically, are not encouraged to do. And I think that's really important. So the story is excellent. The writing is electrifying. The content is enrapturing. And the themes are really, really important. The fact that Theo is a merman is weird but it does help create a metaphor or an allegory that makes sense in the very final act, the, the last 50 pages or so. It's very clear why him being a merman is so important to the events, the themes, the allegory of the book, if you like. I can't talk much about it without spoiling it, but I think making him a merman really, really helped sell the themes of the book, especially with regards to mental health and the choices we make as people with mental health issues. So, I am sold on this book. I adore it, I love it. Five stars, I don't do stars, I don't know what they're for, but I really love this book. I think The Pisces is a fantastic book. Bimini loves it too. And I would recommend it to anyone and everyone. Of course, if you're anything like the people in the one star reviews, then you're not gonna like it. Let's take a look at some of them. This first review is actually rated really highly on Amazon, like a lot of people found it helpful, and it's titled Insipid Nonsense. What the hell kind of nonsense did I just read? It's quite long, so I'm gonna skip to the second half, where she says, The book tries to be erotica, and funny erotica at that. I didn't find it very erotic, and the humour was sort of vulgar and crass which is exactly what I was mentioning before, people didn't seem to like how crass and vulgar the sex, the language, the other aspects of the book are. But we should be celebrating a female writer being bold enough to do something like this with her language. It kind of reminds me of the film Bridesmaids, which was a female poking fun at male humour kind of a film. I loved the film Bridesmaids. and. In that film, you have women behaving in the same way that the men in things like American Pie and The Hangover behaved. Those ridiculous, crass, juvenile jokes, but in the hands of women, and were a lot smarter for it as well. And this book is kind of like that. It's taking jokes that are typically masculine jokes, male jokes, often demoralizing for women, and putting them in the hands of a woman. Worth celebrating from where I'm standing. Okay, <laughs> this one's so great. Ridiculous! This book has a twist where one of the main characters turns out to literally be a mermaid. Nuff said. 
Is that enough said though? I'm not sure that is enough said. I'm not sure if a character turning out to be a mermaid, merman, merperson, I'm not sure if that is enough said. Things like this happen in fiction. Twists like this happen all the time in fiction. What, what would happen if this person read Frankenstein? And then halfway through the book, he builds a man out of body parts. Ridiculous one star. All right, I'm gonna throw up a spoiler warning here for this one because this does spoil something that happens at the end. I'll put a timestamp here that you can skip to if you don't want me to read out this one and spoil something that happens at the very end. It is integral to the ending and it is integral to the character's behavior, motivations, selfishness, etc. If you've read the book, enjoy this. Racy but meh. Loved it till she killed the dog. Selfish! <laughs> so if you've read the book or you don't care to be spoiled, you know that Lucy ends up accidentally killing her sister's dog that she's supposed to be looking after. While she's sleeping with Theo, she puts him in a little cart and she wheels him across Venice Beach into the apartment and so they can have sex on the sofa. But the dog is very annoying. Theo smells like fish. The dog hates Theo. Dog wants to attack Theo. Theo is scared of dogs. So she just locks the dog away in another room and puts him to sleep with tranquilizers. And then she has to start going around to other vets around the town because she can't keep getting more tranquilizers from the same vet. So she's like a drug addict. She's going to different vets trying to get tranquilizers, stronger and stronger, higher and higher doses. Eventually the dog ODs and dies. It's really sad. It's really tragic moment in the book. And it highlights how awful of a person Lucy is. But main characters in books do not have to be likable. They do not have to be good people. They do not have to be relatable. I hate this. I'm gonna make a whole video about this one day. I hate this trope. I hate this miscommunication between the writer and the reader. This misunderstanding that readers have that a character has to be redeemable or kind or nice or relatable. They don't. It's fiction. There are so many books out there with irredeemable, nasty, horrible protagonists. One of my favorite fantasy series, uh, the Prince of Thorns books by Mark Lawrence, the protagonist is an awful human being. Wuthering Heights. There is not a single good person in Wuthering Heights. I love that book. In fact, when I first read Wuthering Heights, I complained about how awful everyone was. My partner Jess said, just stick with it. Reevaluate how you approach reading the book. Keep in mind that these are bad people and just kind of enjoy them for what they are. Enjoy it as a piece of theater, as these awful, terrible people, they don't have to be likable. Half of Shakespeare's characters aren't likable or nice people. It doesn't matter, it's still Shakespeare. There's, there are so many more reasons to read a book and there's a lot that you can get out of reading a book that does have a awful protagonists. So yes, she accidentally kills the dog. Yes, she is selfish. Yes, she is a terrible person. She does still have reasons to be sympathized, empathized with, but not completely. She's a dynamic, complicated, sad, pathetic human being. That's okay. It doesn't make it bad writing. It doesn't make her a bad character. A bad character does not a bad character make. I probably shouldn't have gone off on one so hard until I read this one first, because this one basically now feels like it's arguing against what I just said. I feel like I'm having an invisible conversation with these people. This one said, not a pleasant book. I found I had no sympathy with the central character, whom I found unbelievably selfish to the point of cruelty. The language was coarse and altogether an unpleasant read. It is rare that I abandon a book, but I simply didn't want to inflict any more on myself. Inflict, these people are so dramatic. Same point, the book celebrates the darker side of people. It forces us to explore the very, very sad and cruel and mean-spirited, selfish, misguided, unhealthy aspects of the human condition. Lucy's not a nice person. That's okay. You don't have to like her. At no point is Melissa Broda forcing you to like her characters. A story should not hinge on how likable the protagonist is. A book is quite often, as is the case here, good enough without that. It can be carried on the strengths of other aspects and the character being unlikable is quite often the point. And it helps. It's a good thing. You wanna keep reading about good people all the time. Does that make me weird? Probably. So many of these reviews are very dramatic in their use of language. I'm gonna to come to one in a sec that just takes the cake. Self-indulgent garbage. Don't waste your time on this book unless you like reading about a self-obsessed woman who can't sustain a relationship. Yes, another one of those. And this one seems to think it's clever not to be able to complete her PhD 
either or hold down a job. I couldn't finish this book. I just wanted to shake the protagonist and tell her to get a life. <laughs> so Lucy is a very, very damaged and broken human being. Lucy needs help. Lucy needs therapy. Lucy needs supportive friends and family. Lucy also needs to learn to see beyond her own selfish bubble. Mental health's a complicated thing, and people with depression, anxiety, etc. often behave in a very, very selfish way. I've been guilty of this myself. We take people for granted. We take so many things for granted because we cannot see straight. This, so this reviewer doesn't seem to have much sympathy with Lucy, especially saying that she just wanted to tell her to get a life. You know, it's that boomer attitude that people with mental health issues, you just need to slap them. You need to tell them your life is hard. Tie your shoes or whatever the phrase is, something about bootstraps. Just get on with it. Not great advice. Definitely not the kind of person that should read this book and isn't going to get much from it. I can't help you there. <laughs> okay, in terms of how much this one shocked me, like this is, this is the best one. I can't read out most of this one because I will get demonetized for the content of this review. So I'll put it up on the screen and I'll just read out the last sentence. <laughs> it's horrendous. Don't get your hopes up for a nice mermaid love story. He makes his appearance a third of the way through and then wants to kill her. I wish he succeeded, honestly. <laughs> oh, holy shit. Oh my God. Wow. I would not want to meet this person. This one's incredible. This is the final review that I'm gonna do. And it was written by a guy. Not only was it written by a guy, but he has a Heath Ledger Joker profile picture. Keep that in your head while I read this out and it'll all make sense. You know the thing that some men do when they're trying to be smarter than you, when they're trying to win an argument, when they're trying to appear calmer than you because they don't let their emotions get in the way. They are logical creatures. They are Jordan Peterson's disciples. Those people, those types of internet men. This is clearly one of those. Got your Joker profile picture. And he started the review with just the title, desultory. Desultory? I've never ever heard this word out loud. I've only ever read it. So it's just occurred to me, I have no idea how to pronounce it. Desultory, desultory, don't know. A low rent, bad dream, fanciful tripe. Prose decays rapidly from the first page. A true classic in the doorstopper tradition. I puked. So first off, I'm pretty sure that when you describe a book as a doorstop, it means that it's really long and the Pisces is under 300 pages pretty sure that Anna Karenina or War and Peace are doorstops. But you know, he's trying. Joker Man is trying really hard. Fanciful tripe is incredible. Prose decays rapidly. I love this. There's nothing specific about it. You know, he's not criticizing Lucy as many of them are, criticizing her choices, her decisions, the way that the book ends, the fact that Theo is a merman. It's not really digging into all of that. It's just a Joker man who wants to use a lot of big words to sound clever in his review of a book he didn't like. Man, if that doesn't sum up every internet guy. The takeaway from this is that most people who didn't like this book seem to have a problem with Melissa Broder's language. They don't like the way that she writes, the, the crassness of her language, how she dares to use such vulgar language when talking about sex or other bodily things that I can't talk about because I'll get demonetized. Or they have a problem with her character being such a selfish, horrible person. Lucy is almost irredeemably terrible, especially considering what she does at the end of the book. It doesn't make her a poorly written character. She is a bad character. She is a bad person. She's not poorly written. She is not poorly realized. Her story is interesting. She is sympathetic, especially if you yourself have had mental health issues that have caused you to be sometimes a less than kind and less than good person. If you can relate to that, she's not a bad person wholly. There are things that she does in this book that I cannot relate to in terms of actually having done them myself, but I myself have done bad things, felt the same hollowness and self-loathing that she has felt. I have certainly felt her feelings if I haven't done her actions. But if you have never 
ever done a bad thing in your entire life, if you have this holier-than-thou attitude, then this book is definitely not for you. If you expect your characters to be holier-than-thou, perfect Superman types, this book is not for you. And if you have a problem with a character being a merman in a novel, yeah, this book's definitely not for you. If you want a book that challenges you, if you want a book that is punk, if you want a book that is feminist, if you want a book that highlights and screams about mental health issues and the damage that society causes us and the self-destruction that mental health issues lead to and our addiction to things that are unhealthy and how we really have issues with addiction in so many more ways than just drugs and alcohol. This is a really important book. It's really funny in places, it's really dark, it'll make you laugh, cry, scream, everything. I adored the Pisces to pieces and I cannot recommend it highly enough. The reason I ended up reading it when I did is because a bunch of friends recommended it, including patrons in our Patreon book club. A bunch of them had read it and they all recommended it and I couldn't wait to get my hands on it. I needed an extra push and I got it and I read it. And now I get to make this video, so I'm thrilled for that as well. The Pisces is awesome. Please read it, unless you agreed with any of those people and their concerns. Anyway, I've mentioned our Patreon, so I might as well plug it now. Please support us on Patreon. We would hugely appreciate it. You can join our book club and recommend us books like the Pisces, which I will then read and do videos and articles about. Yay. Also, in the comments, please tell me that you like my Dunga Bees, because I need validation. Bimini says hi. Subscribe for books.